Joining us is Dr. Christine Palme, a physician who has some really extraordinary findings. Yeah. Sharon, you and I were both absolutely, Kate's word, we like Kate's word, gobsmacked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to, to find out that millennials um, believe all kinds of myths and misinformation. Yeah. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me here. It's it's a pleasure. This is a personal passion of mine, and it's just nice to be able to talk to people en masse. So tell us the key findings of this, what you call the truth report. So the truth report is this brilliant study that was done to really assess uh, what millennials are thinking about their health, where they're getting their information, or misinformation in some cases. Um, it looked at women between the ages of 20 to 29, so sort of women who are either in school, um, perhaps have families, you know, not young people necessarily, and uh, the findings were absolutely shocking. Uh, really, women do not know a lot about their sexual health, about their anatomy, about choices made available to them. And this is something that our healthcare industry needs to address. Yet it's something that, like Christine and I, were shocked because we thought, you know, more than ever before, we have access to so much information, yet they don't seem to be, I don't know, ingesting it, I guess is the word. I mean, to find out, for example, 73% of women don't know the anatomy of their own vagina? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's when you say the numbers, it seems almost impossible. It does. <laughs> Three but, out of four women yeah. don't know. You know, and uh, but on a daily basis in my clinic, I'm always pulling out my, I have this anatomic model and actually showing people what their cervix is, you know, when I'm doing a pap, showing them, you know, what happens during sex. And you'd think that with media access mm. and the internet and everything else on YouTube, uh, that people would be able to access information and you know I always think that having access to information is wonderful it's our right but it doesn't necessarily equate to being informed does it also come down to maybe that because everything's out there and there's a hesitancy to ask questions because people they think pe people would expect they just know all this yeah I think there's two problems there's that exactly um, there's an assumption uh, by patients and I think by healthcare professionals where we forget uh, to actually ask very specific questions to mm -hmm. make an, an, an assessment of their knowledge. But then there's um, a bit of a sense of these questions are embarrassing. Sometimes it's difficult for people to come in and ask questions that they may feel that they should know. Mm -hmm. And this uh, provides an easy way to try to circumvent asking somebody. But I, I find it shocking because when you look at you know, videos mm -hmm. of college girls and what they're doing on March break and, 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 and the conversations that are being had on social media about everything and any, anything, the, the, the amount of porn that's out yeah. there or soft, hard porn. And then you find out that in this study, 10%, 21% in Canada, but 10% believe that you can't get pregnant while menstruating. Mm -hmm. This is serious stuff. Very this is, serious. This is birth control. Yeah, and you know... 101. And unwanted pregnancies, I mean, forget the personal burden, mm -hmm. um, the emotional turmoil, there's a burden to the healthcare system. And I think this also highlights that, number one, you need to ask your healthcare prep a practitioner and number two doctors have to do a better job in bringing up options so you know the old adage I'm just going to continue with what I'm doing because it ain't broke so why fix it mm -hmm. doesn't apply you know I talk to my patients you update your apps on a daily basis Apple sends us these you know nice reminders update your app to get the latest information um, we don't do the same with our health so uh, many patients still come to me and think that birth control is the only option for contraception um, you know, birth control is effective, mm -hmm. but there are other options available that are in fact more effective, but more importantly, p more suitable for, um, for women. And, you know, ultimately, whatever a woman chooses to do with her health, that is her choice. That's her prerogative. She should be supported, but she needs to know her options at a base. You know, you don't buy a car um, just walking into the uh, store and seeing the first model. You do your due diligence and compare models, see what you need, how much fuel do you need, you know, what the, what the ratings are. And uh, I think we're a little bit less um, 
support us to do that with our health. It's unfortunate. You know, what, what strikes me is this is sort of like learning about sex in yeah. the playground mm -hmm. in public school in that nothing much has changed, only now we're talking about women who are old enough to get yeah. pregnant. Absolutely. Um, and they're not, they're embarrassed to ask their doctor yeah. about basic things like birth control? Yeah, no, I, I mean, I see it on a daily basis. Sometimes I need to bring it up specifically. So what are they doing instead? They're, they're, they're landing in social media and believing everything they hear? What, what's going on? Yeah, I mean, uh, according to the study, uh, women know that the information that they're accessing is not necessarily reliable, but I think the stat was somewhere around 67 to 70 percent still say that they're passing that information on to their friend, um, you know, to their butcher. So, you know, what she said becomes what she said heard through what this person said through another thing. It's like broken telephone, exactly. but with very important things. <laughs> exactly, and, you know, the number of misconceptions um, that are out there, you know, some big ticket items, so you mentioned not getting uh, getting pregnant on your period. I mean, it's it's not likely, but it can happen. Mm -hmm. uh, another misconception is is that the birth control pill, if you miss a dose, you can take it an hour later and be safe. Complete misconception, and I have a number of patients who have become pregnant because of that. Wow. Uh, a misconception about our anatomy, you know, uh, about our, our vaginal area, where our, our, the anatomic location of various things are. And I think a misconception that um, there aren't options available to women that help them. So, you know, in addition to the birth control pill, we have other forms of birth control, either a ring, a patch, an IUD or an IUS, um, that can kind of help women gain a better control of their fertility. Um, has there, did the study go into where the, that particular group of young women were learning? That Have the parents kind of been shifted out of the role of being the initial um, provider of information to young women? Are they, are moms kind of saying, well, they, they already know everything? I don't know about you, but I heard from, you know, my grade one classmate about what sex was. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily changed from the parental perspective. <laughs> I'm still a little bit traumatized. I remember standing there and thinking, oh my goodness, and then going home and asking my mom who uh, sighed and gave me the, the truth. Right. But um, yeah, I think much like healthcare providers aren't, are missing the mark, mm -hmm. you know, we're making assumptions. And you're absolutely right. The availability of information online is massive. Uh, the quality, well, that's something that uh, we need to analyze. Yeah, so hit and miss. Well, I mean, I know people that get a pain or, or something, well, instead of calling their doctor, they will go online, and they've got it all figured out, what <laughs> disease they have. Oh, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, there are a whole bunch of extenuating factors that have not been factored in. <laughs> Absolutely. But that brings us back maybe to, although this isn't really a show about that, about, for example, the big brouhaha about the sex ed curriculum in Ontario, yes. even though other provinces have already in implemented an updated version and did it years ago, uh, you know, there's been a huge outcry and this just underlines, a, a survey like this just mm -hmm. underlines the, f the fact that we do need to have, you know, it in black and white for kids to learn. You know, uh, children, millennials, whatever generational label, we underestimate their intelligence and their ability to make decisions for themselves and I think uh, what we need to do is provide valid information, information that's reliable, update them, and you know, let, let them make their decisions at the end of the day. So how would you like to see things change so that more women are educated about the things that really matter? Because these are decisions that have irreparable, irrevocable consequences. Mm -hmm. Because if you get pregnant and you yeah. didn't plan it, you keep the baby or you don't keep the baby, but either way, the repercussions are for life. Absolutely, 100%. I mean, I think the first thing is critical appraisal, so giving patients a sense of where to access information in this massive, massive source called the internet. Uh, number two is uh, encouraging patients to ask questions. So even if your healthcare provider doesn't ask you specifically about birth control, you ask, you start the conversation. Um, take initiative, be an active participant in your health. And number three, I think media-wise um, and in any sort of advertisements or teachings about fertility, about sexuality, make women aware of options that are available to them. 
um, and then direct them to speak to somebody who can actually put it in terms that uh, you can understand, first of all, and that are personalized to you. Not every option is suitable for every person, uh, and you need to go through a checklist as to what you're seeking uh, in terms of birth control, in terms of fertility, in terms of sexuality, and then come to a decision. That's informed. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like advertising, isn't it, where there are all these alternative uh, birth control forms, not just the birth control pill, but as you mentioned, all kinds of other things. They're out there. We've read studies when they're, mm -hmm. when they're released or when they become available, yet if young women don't know they're there, then exactly. they can't partake of them. Uh, that trip to the health care provider is so very important. Absolutely, and you know, making sure that healthcare providers create an environment where people feel comfortable asking what are sometimes embarrassing questions. If you were, for example, to direct somebody online, let's say mm -hmm. people who live um, in in smaller communities where a trip to the doctor is There's not a, great access, a, a bigger deal. Yeah. You know, living in a big city, it's easy. You can. Where would you direct them to go online to find accurate information? So that's a great question, sort of a question I get on a daily basis from patients. I often tell patients, go to foundation. So if you're questioning about osteoporosis, go to the Osteoporosis Foundation of Canada. You know, they'll have compiled information. In terms of sexuality, there's a great site that's sponsored by the uh, Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada. So it's credible and it's Canadian. It's called www.sexualitynu.ca. Uh, I had the privilege of being involved in a webinar series called uh, talkwithyourdoc.ca and it goes through birth control options and then there's a specific video on intrauterine systems um, addressing big myths. So things that I've taken from my clinic and distill down to top five myths, you know, with birth control and other options, uh, and just address them straight on. That's important because I remember going back to when I was a young woman, you know, late teens, early twenties, and the IUD was a scary option. Oh, exceptionally scary, but we've come a long way. I mean, I look at the older IUDs and they just look like a bad idea. Yeah. And, you know, but 30 years later, we have wonderful options that are available to women of all ages. Um, the misconception that you can only have an IUS or an IUD when, uh, if you've had a child is completely, completely wrong. They're safe, they're reliable, uh, and you know, they may be more appropriate depending on a woman's uh, life choices, her schedules, etc. So talk to your healthcare provider or you can go and access the information on one of those credible websites. And repeat the website again for us? So www.sexualityandyou.ca. That's Sexuality and you, y -O -U. Uh, a N D U, so just the letter A N U. There you go. U. Okay, so you see. Yeah, they've had a few advertisements on subways, and then there's um, talkwithyourdoc.ca. Talk very important. Your, that's very, very important. And you can be reached where? Where can they find you? Well, I have um, a bit of a social media presence, so you can uh, Google me. It's Dr. Christine Palme, and uh, I have a few videos that I have online through YouTube, uh, and some on Twitter as well. So we would urge all all women out there, all young women out there, and their moms, and their moms, yep. <laughs> anybody who has a question, to uh, distribute that website information. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Empower ourselves. Empower yourself and your friends. Click the channel subscribe button for full-length interviews and more from what she said here on YouTube.